Every Athlete Matters is proudly presented by Victory Honda of Muncie. For more info, visit VictoryMuncie.com. The national leader in digital sports production is in Ball State's College of Communication, Information, and Media. The best stories in Ball State sports, the best professionals in sports media contributing, and live productions to ESPN platforms from day one. This is Ball State Sportsland. Welcome inside Studio B at Ball State University for the premiere episode of our new show, Every Athlete Matters, presented by Victory Honda of Muncie. I'm Rachel Berry. And I'm Ryan Klimchak. Every month, the creative storytellers in Ball State Sports Link will showcase the best stories in Ball State Sports in one show. And we're also excited that this show reaches every county in the state of Indiana, plus parts of Michigan and Ohio. Not to mention our flagship station, WIPB-TV in Muncie, Comcast Indiana, the ISC Sports Network, and as of just now, it's also available on ESPN+. To get our show started this month, Ball State field hockey senior Michelle Shampton walks us through how destiny played a role in her decision to come to Ball State, plus the hard work, dedication, and determination required on the road to recovery. Produced by Quentin Zilke, this is Michelle Shampton's story. It's Shampton trying a wraparound shot, and it gets by McFerrin. Michelle Shampton scores Ball State's first goal of the game here against Louisville. I got introduced to field hockey because my cousin originally told me that um, because we played the same sports, she didn't want me to play field hockey. So I made her teach me the rules, and the next day I bought a stick and then fell in love with the game. It's so different depending on where you're at in the country, which is kind of the cool thing. Like here in the Midwest, there's these little pockets of field hockey around, whereas in Virginia, Pennsylvania, the East Coast, you're encountering it a bit more at a younger age. This one girl, her name's Bianca, from Ball State, she came up to me and she was like, I don't know if you're committed anywhere, but like, I really want you to come to Ball State. And I was like, I don't even know what Ball State is. I Facebook chatted Bianca and was like, if I could come for a visit, I would like absolutely love to. So I came for a visit here and I'm really big on seeing signs and on my drive up, I saw Macedonia Avenue and my mom's Macedonian and then Oakwood Avenue, and I went to Oakwood High School, and then I came into the like locker room here, and um, all the alumni usually put their name, and if they had like some sort of nickname, they put that under, and one girl named Michelle, her nickname was Buckley, and my dad called me that growing up. So I was like, I think I'm meant to be here. My entire goal, like from middle school on, was to make it to college, and I finally feel like I got here and I was in a program that I belonged in. After um, the fourth game, we had a practice the next day on Labor Day. And um, we were doing, it's this thing called the BBG. One person's on offense and the other girl's on defense. And I was on defense and we were going on angles. And I wasn't really like paying attention. I was kind of like going through the motions and I was playing defense. And I remember like looking down at my left foot and it stayed in place and I tried to cut and my left foot stayed in place but my knee twisted. And then I heard a <sighs> and I fell to the ground and I was like screaming, oh my God, like I just tore my ACL. After we got the MRI, they're like, yep, it's a clean tear. Um, and then they told me I'd be out for the rest of the season. And that was like the most, like I could cry about it now. Like it was the most heartbreaking moment of my life because I finally felt like I had made it in a certain aspect. And then it was like ripped out from under me. If she wouldn't have told me, I never would know that's something that she went through. There was never an excuse. There was never any sort of favoring of it. The one thing that kept me here was the girls on this program and 
and just hope that hope and knowing that you know as time goes on things are going to get better and just to stick it out because I didn't want to give up. In sports you're going to cross section with, with something like that, with an injury, with a change in coaching, um, with something going differently than you expected. Everyone is going through something, but you have to be able to put that aside for a second and think of your team and realize that what you're doing is bigger than yourself. She truly is an incredibly selfless person. Playing this sport gives me like such an adrenaline rush, and I get so much joy from playing it, but I think if I didn't play with the people that I love every day, I wouldn't enjoy it as much. Michelle Shampton led the Cardinals in goals in 2018 and has certainly been a key player for the Cardinals over the last couple of years. And how about those things she mentioned, seeing those signs visiting Ball State? I think it's safe to say her and Ball State, it was meant to be. It definitely was. And moving on, two athletes at Ball State share a unique bond, and it is even reasonable to think Jared Holder wouldn't even be on the swimming team at Ball State if it weren't for his cousin, women's volleyball outside hitter, Kaya Holder. The two talked about friendship and family in a piece produced by Ben Acker and B Dylan Thompson. Kaya and I have always been like best friends growing up. We, we saw each other once a month, and then uh, when I came here, and now we're like, we're siblings, basically. I have two younger brothers, so he definitely just fit in. I just always, like, kind of considered him to be a, a younger brother to me, so I always kind of just, like, pushed him to be the guy he is today. As the kids were growing up, they were always around the pool, and Jared was a little afraid of the water when he was younger, and so our kids were very gracious in helping him to get into the pool. <laughs> they had, like, this... 10 foot slide, like blow up slide. And one day I was sitting on the top of it, had no idea how to swim this, and going to the deep end, Kaya walks up and just shoves me off. And I kind of just figured out how to swim. Like, it wasn't good, but I doggy paddle. Then after that, I wasn't afraid of the water. He didn't really like it that much. Same with his younger sisters, but um, we kind of forced it. And if they wanted to play with us, they had to swim, so. <laughs> He kind of caught on. He came home the fourth grade with a flyer in his backpack and said, I want to try out for a swim team. I've swam at Kaya's pool. I've swam there enough. I think I know what I'm doing. I've seen the Olympics once or twice. So I think I can do this. Like all throughout middle school, I'm like, oh, I'm pretty good at this. I can make the high school team. And then high school, I'm like, oh, I'm pretty good at this. I can stay on the high school team. And then it wasn't until like my junior year, then like, I started getting emails, and Kai is like, hey, I think you can go D1. We were very excited to have him come to Ball State and be, be with Kai, and for all of us to be together, yeah. you know, that's something we love to do, um, is be together as a family, and so now we can come as a family and watch both of them compete at, at a higher level, and it's very exciting for our family. It's really awesome. I mean, he's definitely like someone I can go to if I need to, and he obviously knows he can always come to me. He definitely likes to make sure that I'm doing what I can to be where I'm at, and we definitely hold a high standard for each other. No matter what we're doing, we're competing. So if I see her in the stands one, one meet, I will probably do better if she's there than if she's not. You know, I think their relationship continues to grow and evolve as they mature into adulthood. And being here at Ball State will be an opportunity for them to continue to connect and, and be together and support one another. So we're excited to have them here together. Jared Holder and the Ball State men's swimming and diving team begin their season this month as Kaya Holder and women's volleyball are in full gear now in conference play. And I'm sure we'll be seeing the Holder family at several of those events. Now that it is October, Ball State football turns its attention to Maction. Through the first month of the season, redshirt junior quarterback Drew Plitt ranks among the nation's top passers, but his journey from fourth string quarterback to QB1 includes more than just football. Here's a look at the Plitt You May Not Know, produced by Daria Busher. I started collecting shoes in eighth grade, just kept doing it, cleaning them. I've had people ask me like, when I've got, when I'm wearing shoes that are like three years old, four years old, like ask me if they're new shoes. I'm like, no, 
just keep them super clean and I don't let anybody wear them at home. Because anytime I leave a pair of shoes at home, my dad always wants to wear them and I don't let him. I used to just do it with just like soap and water. But as I got older, I started to find more like, I think it's just become bigger that like shoe cleaning stuff has gotten more popular. There's several companies that do it now and they sell them in like Foot Locker and Finish Lines Champs and stuff like that. I kind of get some crazy looks um, from the coaches whenever I come in with some crazy shoes or something that they're not used to that aren't just black and white. Um, and then I'll wear some different kind of clothes, some Supreme or um, kind of one of my personal favorites is like Kith or Kith Treats. They've got some cool shirts that they come out with that I love to wear. Um, and the coaches always give me crap about it or my family are always like, what are you wearing? I'm just like, I'm wearing my style. Came in as a fashion major. When I first started, it just the classes didn't suit me with sewing and stuff, so I changed out of that. But I don't know. I really love the fashion industry. I think a lot of the stuff, like Cam Newton, what he wears is pretty cool. This is my shoe bag that I got recently. Got dividers and stuff. And these are just some classic Jordans, some retro fours, uh, white cement, and. I got these a while back, back in high school. I think I was a senior. Um, one of my, actually one of my teammates now hooked me up. He helped me get them at, at a discount because he worked at a Foot Locker. Um, I love to wear these around. They're, they're just, they're comfortable and they're classic and kind of go with anything, the colors. These are just the original Ultra Boost and they, re, they came back out when they re-released. I had to get them. They're just kind of a, a classic that, you know, is, wasn't too expensive and I think it's just a cool colorway, simple. These ones are just, when all the Vapor Max came out, I wanted a pair and just didn't fall in love with it until I, any, until I came up on these on like StockX. Um, you don't see these very often. They're kind of a, they're not like a rare colorway, but it's just, they didn't have them out for very long. They didn't make a ton of them and they weren't in stores for very long. So it's kind of cool, uh, kind of a burgundy colorway. And they go with some different things. These are kind of my personal favorite Yeezys. Um, 700s. It's just this is kind of the coolest collab that they, that Kanye and Yeezy have, I think, with the the big midsole, the the dad shoe that's come out. But I think this kind of fits more of a sporty style, um, which I love. And it also has the boost material that's super comfortable. Um, I think just all the colors flow well, even though it's kind of random. So those are kind of a personal favorite of mine. A lot of people kind of question it, but. It's different and as long as you own it and you're confident, it's kind of cool to wear whatever you want. As we now welcome Ball State quarterback and shoe aficionado Drew Plitt to the show. Drew, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, first, I have to ask about the shoes, of course, as we just saw there, you're big on shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, who else on your team would you say has a shoe game as, as good as yours? Um, well, some people have some better shoe game than me. A lot of people have uh, a lot of different shoes. Uh, Justin Hall, for one, he's, he's got some different shoes like Prada, um, and even my roommate Nolan, you know, he's kind of gotten into the game more, so it's a lot of fun to see everybody wearing shoes like this. And are those guys as delicate as they as you are with your shoes? Like, are they washing their shoes? Constantly? Yeah, a lot of people do do it. Um, it's kind of a, a normal thing when you're a sneakerhead. And if you could design, you mentioned if you could design a sneaker, you would want to do it with Kanye West. Oh, yeah. Why is that? Uh, he's just kind of got a different style. Um, it's a lot more fun, kind of just more fun for me to, I think it would be cool to do. And focusing here on football, you've obviously had a long course to get where you are right now, now the starting quarterback this year. What would you say are some of the biggest things that you've learned throughout your time here? Uh, just staying patient, staying positive. Um, through it all, you know, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of different things happening. So you just have to kind of hope for the best and expect the worst and go through it and just take it one day at a time. And Mac play is going to be in full swing here pretty soon. So what would you say are some of the goals you have your eyes set on? Uh, for, for us, it's winning a Mac championship, going to Detroit and w winning that Mac championship, uh, no matter how it happens. 
And this year, you've sort of taken another step up in the fact that the statistics you're piling up are incredibly impressive. What would you say is the biggest reason for your success this year as opposed to some of the other years? Uh, the, the, busy, the biggest thing for me is just the players I have around me. Um, they're making plays. I'm getting the ball to them. I do the easy part. They do the hard part. Um, you know, at, anywhere from the running backs to wide receivers to tight ends, even the O-line, they're doing a great job protecting. So for me, it's, it's really just a testament to, to who they are. So you mentioned getting to the MAC championship and winning the MAC. What is going to be some of the challenges in getting there? Um, for us, we just got to stay who we are. Uh, I think the first first thing is beating NIU, um, going up there and winning that first first game in the MAC uh, is a, is the biggest thing for us. Very good. And we now focus our attention on soccer, where sophomore midfielder Tatiana Mason continues to thrive for the Cardinals this season. She explains one key reason for her success in a pack produced by Corey Vervink. I'm a very goal-oriented person, so I put a number three on my hand to remind me I usually have three goals right before the game that I'll plan out. And I think the fact that I can like change my goals each game just keeps me on my toes and keeps me prepared, like depending on the team we play or what style of play we plan on playing. So just being able to look down at my hand and say, okay, I have this reminder here of what I need to be doing helps me stay focused. So one of my old teammates from last year, Allison Abbey, is interested in sports psychology. So last spring I was doing meetings with her and she thought that making three goals, because three is just like, it's a small number, it's not too big, but it's not too small. So having three goals would just like help me focus during the game. I think the last two games of the spring season I wrote three on my hand. Usually I have like an attacking goal and a defensive goal. So for example, I'll be like, I want to take on a defender three times or beat a defender three times. I usually always have take at least two shots during the game. That's always the goal. I, I think offensively I had some success. And then defensively I'll say, I want to make sure I track back the outside back, make sure I'm doing my defensive duties. This is the season we have a great group of girls. We have like we're very good workers you know we put in the dirty work whenever we have to so I think just like whatever I can do for the team I want to do. Going away to school is never an easy transition for any high schooler to make but for Yorktown native and sophomore distance runner Maddie Ull her transition to Ball State was a little easier being able to run so close to home. She discusses that transition and what got her into running in the next piece produced by Balin Height. Like it's different growing up as someone who's like from this area because like you know about Ball State and like you, you look up to those athletes and like the people here and it's just like you hear about Ball State all the time and then to actually like come in and be a part of it I think is really special like I'd already kind of decided I wanted to go here. I wasn't really looking to run anywhere else, but I knew that if the opportunity presented itself to be able to have the opportunity here, then that was definitely something I would take advantage of. She comes from a program and in high school where she was successful and she was, you know, winning a lot of races and up front. And I think, you know, she just grinds. She comes every day and, and wants to work. So I think that's definitely gonna pay off in the long run for her. I think I really like just like being able to, do, to compete, that aspect of it I really enjoy. And I like that, like in a lot of other sports there are a lot of like unknown factors and kind of like luck to it and like a lot of like your teammates and all that kind of stuff and with running it's just like you and like your performance and so it's like whatever performance you do like you're going to get out of it what you put into it. Maddie Ull competed in 13 meets for the Cardinals last season and will be a staple for the Cardinals as the season moves along. Absolutely. We shift gears from one Yorktown athlete to another. Gymnast Tori Long's powerful story is one of friendship, loss, faith, and recovery. Produced by Daria Busher, this is Tori Long in Bloom. She's not the most talented gymnast. I mean, it didn't. None of it really came natural to her. 
her determination. I'm, every place she's gone, she's always got the hardest worker award. She has been knocked down a lot, and she just keeps going. Caroline and I always went to Ball State meets together. We dreamed, like even if we didn't go to the same college, like we knew we wanted to do college gymnastics. We said that if we were close, we would meet and do Zumba like monthly together to make sure we stayed in contact. Friday nights we'd want to stay at my house because we'd have the football games and the basketball games and the fun stuff of being at a bigger school then I would stay at her house on Saturday night so that we could go to church together the next morning. Eighth grade year, we had to write letters to self and you could have people write you letters. So Caroline wrote me a letter. They would walk, we'll just say down the hallway and they're holding hands. I mean, what kids do that? They just genuinely loved each other. And it was rare, and they had a very, very rare friendship. Jill called, which is Caroline's mom, calm as could be, and she said, um, I just want to let you know um, that she is at peace right now and that she is in heaven. It, it did not register what she had just said. My sophomore year of high school, my best friend Caroline and her boyfriend Brayden and her sister Annie and her boyfriend Ethan all got in a car accident. It, it was just surreal. It didn't feel real for a long time. In the end, Caroline, my best friend, Annie, and Brayden all ended up passing away. I got closer with my faith after the accident. That Easter, I got baptized with Caroline's little sister. For me, the only way that I got through it was looking towards faith and looking at why things are uncertain and why we don't know the plan. It's his plan and he knows why, and even if I still don't understand all the reasons, like, he has a plan. Two months after the accident, I was like, oh my gosh, I have a letter from her. So I got to read that letter from her my senior year. On the outside, she signed her name with a heart, and so my tattoo is the heart. Anything that I would ever have wanted to hear from her, I heard. It was sad, but like, you know, one last little conversation. At first it was kind of hard. That's where our relationship was. We met through gymnastics. They had a meet, not even a month after the accident. She physically couldn't do anything. I mean, literally physically could not do anything. They weren't taking scores for the floor routines and they all learned Caroline's floor routine performed it that day. She rocked it. She killed it, you know? After not being able to move, pretty much, she killed it. I knew after this accident that I wanted to do it also for Caroline. So although gymnastics was kind of hard at that time, I did it for her. She wanted Ball State Gymnastics so much and I think that it was kind of hard there for those you know couple of years and then her senior year she really you know put the grid in and did what she needed to do. She wanted to focus on gymnastics because her, her end goal was college. I got the phone call from Joanna and she was like what did you do this kid like she is just on fire and I was just like oh my goodness we did it. She's finally going to get her dream after everything that she's gone through. I immediately burst into tears because it's what she's worked so hard for. And she did it. She did it on her own. Tori, take it off. Yeah. Use the energy just to have fun. 
Ball so hard. One, two, three. Ball so hard, you! When, it, when it's something that your child loves that much, it, it's, you, you're not, you don't feel like you're giving up, uh, you know, it's, uh, you watch them flourish, all the lessons they get out of it, time management to self-motivation, it, it's all just so worth it. When I got the offer from Joanna that um, fall, it was just, it was awesome. It was the best feeling I've ever felt because I like did it. I did what I've dreamed of since I was a little girl and I did it for my best friend too. It's certainly never easy losing those closest to us, but obviously a very powerful and moving story for Tori Long and for her high school team to, to bounce back and perform the way they did. Very impressive. And it shows Tori's strength, and I'm sure she brought that to Ball State with her. We know that. And that does it for the first episode of Every Athlete Matters, presented by Victory Honda of Muncie. For Ryan Klimchak, I'm Rachel Berry. Thank you for watching, and be sure to follow Ball State Sports Link on all social media, just search at BSU Sports Link. We will see you next month.